lots to unpack to quote Rob Wolf. Um, so when I went to the CrossFit deal, uh, the seminar, what they did is they set up expectations of range of motion. You, you know, this is the range of motion for this movement. This is the range of motion for this movement. Um, I thought that was awful. I mean, I think you should discuss range of motion and said, Hey, this is what the perfect range of motion should be. But what I did when we taught CrossFit football is I made a distinction said, Hey, everybody knows what the you know proper range of motion. Everybody should be able to squat like this. Everybody should be able to do these movements. But unfortunately, many of you will not be able to do them today. So instead of forcing you to into a bad position, uh, getting you into some arbitrary, you know, measuring standard, which is what, you know, CrossFit did. They had to have it measurable and repeatable. So you got to squat to a certain depth. You got to do this because it has to be measurable and repeatable. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the best range of motion you have on this given day. And from here, we will begin the process of getting you stronger, more stable, and increasing range of motion. A lot of times, um, flexibility wasn't necessarily the issue. It's just people weren't able to be stable and strong in those ranges of motion. As I said many, many years ago, and I've said many times, uh, flexibility without stability is a guaranteed injury. So if you are not stable, in these ranges of motion and you can't be able you know, maintain posture and position, then I don't want to put you into those ranges of motion because then I'm putting you into a situation where now you have a greater chance of injury. I'll just give you a little backstory. Um, years ago when we were a little Balboa and it was in my house, uh, we traded out with these yogis. So we were going and doing yoga a couple days a week. Um, and we invited them to come lift weights with us. These people were, uh, that had done yoga were super flexible. They could do all these poses. They were really good with isometric contractions, everything. They could not squat anywhere near parallel with any form of weight. So we started with a bar on their back. And uh, the age old looked like a dog shitting a razor blade is where that came from. They rounded their backs. They couldn't squat. They couldn't get up parallel. Um, but they were super flexible. And I realized that flexibility wasn't their limiting factor. It was that that active range of motion, their active stability was so poor because they couldn't maintain posture and position and stability in those deeper ranges of motion because they didn't have the strength. So then that started me down this idea that um, if you force people into ranges of motion that they're not strong in, they will be unstable and they will guarantee them injury. So what I would say at the seminar and when we teach people here today is we all know what the standard is. If you have Instagram and you've seen squat fails and you've fucking been on the internet and seen people ridiculed for shitty technique, you will know that, you know, there's a, a you know, a passable squat below parallel and, you know, there's some fucking monument to, you know, where a bunch of dipshits on the internet, um, you know, hold in high regard the guy that can get splinters on his ass when he's squatting. And while it looks cool, is it you know, a position that you're ever going to see in athletics, not unless you're a fucking catcher. So, uh, what is, you know, what is the you know ideal range of motion? We all know what it looks like. We all know what a good looking squat looks like. We all should be able to videotape or, you know, uh, take a, you know, small video of what our squat looks like and have that mental preparation. Now, a lot of times when you start forcing yourself into ranges of motion and that you're not comfortable, you're not strong in, you're going to see people do a bunch of shit. They're going to round their back. They're going to dump their knees. They're going to do whatever they can to get into those ranges of motion. And the squat's going to look awful like a dog shitting a razor blade. So what I would rather have people do is I would rather have you squat well to less depth or, you know, pull from a different position and find different workarounds. I want you to lift your best lift. And as you get more proficient and stronger and more stable and start training, you can start developing strength to go into those deeper ranges of motion. And I would tell people in text, you heard me say this for years, I don't, I need you to squat well. I don't need you to squat as deep as humanly possible based off of some arbitrary fucking, you know, uh, madman's desire, but I need you to lift weights and we're going to stop you and we're going to get you into a range of motion where you can demonstrate proficiency. From this, we will give you homework. And I need you to fight to get more and more range of motion, but never at the expense of challenging posture and position and technique. So uh, all too often, we will you know, set our bodies on the funeral pyre of, of ego and fucking set it ablaze. Um, but you know, that became a really uh, issue. And you know, where we started this idea of battle the bullshit started there. The other one, and we saw this all too often, is people were stretching way too much. So we get into this deal where people are trying to be 99 level supple leopards. 
you know, they're fucking stretching 25 times a day. You know, every time you see them stop, they're stretching, they're stretching. And then all of a sudden they're artificially getting themselves into range of motion that they cannot control. And that age old, and I said it earlier, right? Um, flexibility without stability is guaranteed injury. And this, and we saw this over and over and over where we would see people squat and my first thing or lift and do different things. My first thing was be, would be stop fucking stretching. You need a certain amount of rigidity to mm-hmm. be able to lift heavy weights. Um, you know, the, the biggest one is if you want to deadlift heavy, you want to squat heavy, stop stretching your back. Um, you know, that was the, uh, Stu McGill, you know, your back has, um, you know, these discs and these different fibers and the muscles, you know, almost similar to steel belts. And when you start spreading those steel belts, that's when you're going to get a ton of, in, uh, instability in the back. I'm going back. I'm a loaded freight train and I'm right on track. I'm smoking.